Hello, today I am here to talk to you about Supper Club by Lara Williams. This came out in 2019 um, and it follows a girl called Roberta in two different points in her life. So it alternates sort of between these two perspectives. Um, the first is her first two years at university where she's a bit of a loner. Um, this all takes place in an unnamed English city, but I'm guessing it's Manchester because she's from Manchester and it sort of fits into Manchester. So it's when she's in university and also a period in her late 20s where she's working for a fashion website, she's still a bit of a loner, and she meets this girl called Stevie that she really connects to. They have this very intense friendship and they start up this thing called Supper Club together. They group together a selection of women that have been scorned by men or society and they gorge themselves. They eschew all societal expectations that have been thrust upon them and they dance wearing fancy dress until 6am and they really really let loose. So we get these two snapshots of the beginning of Roberta's adult life and the, the, the period of time where she really starts taking control of her life and becomes more adult. And this book really resonated with me, both halves so much. The bits about her university life just brought me straight back to that scared little girl feeling I had when I moved to London from Bath at the age of 18. I didn't know anyone. I was going to like one of the best art schools in arguably the world full of really cool self-assured people and I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And for the first week I just didn't have any friends and I was too afraid to like go to the pub when everyone from the whole halls was going to the pub and just like by a freak accident one of my um one of my flatmates in my halls flat dragged me to another flat in the same halls for like a, a party at the weekend and um i just found my crowd there i totally found my crowd there and i had a great time but that was my foundation year at art school and after that all my friends split up and moved all over the country for their bachelors and I stayed in London in a similar kind of area and I was suddenly back to having no friends and <laughs> I had to go through that whole process again of like trying to put myself out there like against all of my instincts and fuck it is terrifying <laughs> It's so scary and I really feel for Roberta and I really really feel for myself when I was 18. So that half really resonated with me and the other half about, well a lot of it is about her relationship to men which we'll get onto in a sec. So but that resonated with me as well um, but also just like having, dealing with um, estranging yourself from your friends when you when you're in a serious relationship and um, like having a purpose at work and experimenting with trying different things um, and also saying goodbye to the exciting things and it's just like it was just so good. So I want to talk about two things, food and men. Let's start with the food, the entree. So during her first term of university, Roberta just gets really into cooking and then for the rest of time is just like amazing at cooking, just has like such a flair for food. And food is her like go-to activity, but it's also like the way she provides for people and the way she loves herself. Um, and there were quite, there were like maybe four or five sections in this book where randomly it just spends three pages talking about like the right technique to caramelize onions. And that's the kind of thing that maybe would put off quite a lot of readers. But for me, I just loved it. I was like, oh yes, thanks for ex explaining to me the best way to make kimchi. I'm like genuinely gonna <laughs> steal that recipe from this novel. <laughs> but so much more of this book is talking about food as power and female appetite as power. And I want to read you this whole section because um, I thought it was fantastic. In this passage, Roberta's trying to explain to her boyfriend um, like what supper club is beyond just like a cookery club as he calls it and how it is like actually quite a radical space. It's about existing in spaces we're told we shouldn't exist in or how we behave in spaces that expect us to behave a certain way, to be a certain thing. And what if we don't want to be that thing? What if we don't want to behave in that way? And then what if actually everywhere is one of those restrictive spaces? What if the whole world is designed to inhibit you and just to exist in it is to break some deep taboo? So what if you give up making yourself smaller all the time, like all the time, and you make yourself bigger instead? And what if to make space for yourself to be bigger, you have to take it? And she's talking about like the radical notion of like food as nutrition, as literally like more weight on your body to take up more space and defy those societal expectations which is so powerful but it's also in kind of like a semi-ironic way there's a really kind of fun balance in this book between 
them actually considering it to be like a feminist protest um, but also just being like I want to have some fun and cook some food and be a bit silly for me that's like a really beautiful harmony it doesn't take itself too seriously despite how serious maybe that passage I read you was the main thing that they are protesting mostly is is men and like the models of masculinity and femininity I'm gonna be fairly heteronormative in this review I apologize for lumping you know not all men reading this reminded me of the fact so distinctively that women start out from a place of being unlovable. I don't think I had a single girlfriend who at the start of uni had ever had a decent relationship um, and therefore like felt that there were decent relationships to be had and I think so many, myself included, so many of my girlfriends started university and had a load of shit experience with boys, maybe even pre-university, but shit experience with the boys and they break you down and make you think that that is an acceptable way to be treated and that you're never gonna get anything more. And it is so horrific to see women being just broken down into their constituent parts. But the wonderful thing is, and I always, I always maintain this even before I had it, is that there are good men out there. There are good men that not only will show you that you are lovable, but that will heal your past wounds. And it's wonderful getting this position from Roberta because we see the breaking down happening while she's at uni. And then in the other narrative, we see her being built back up. This bit I'm about to read you, I cried when I read it the first time. I may cry when I read it again now. Um, but it's about like the men having the capacity to build you back up. We lay like spoons for hours before I told him. He stiffened, then loosened, then just held me a little tighter. He always held me tighter after that. And the good men can be wonderful and they can be healing, but they cannot be fixing. Like they can't undo damage that has been done in the past really they can't actually eradicate it and that doesn't like even if you're with the best man in the world that doesn't mean that you still don't have that female rage that righteous female rage that you that you had from your past experiences and from all of these like expectations that society weighs on you and sometimes you just need to f have a fucking food fight this was terrific for me right now especially if you are a woman a young woman maybe before you even got to that second stage, maybe you're still in that first stage. I think this will help you breathe. Um, this has been a video on Supper Club by Lara Williams. I am eagerly anticipating more of her work um, because not only did like the topics hit the spot, but I just, I think the nuances that she dealt with and the way it was written, I also really enjoyed. So thoroughly recommending this and I will see you soon for another video. Bye.